want to welcome all of His Glory Nation from east to west to north to south. We bring you uh, Shabbat Shalom. That uh, is uh, the Shabbat in uh, Jerusalem. Today is the Sabbath, Saturday. And Shalom is peace to everyone in the name of our beloved Savior Jesus Christ and to the world. We as Christians love all brothers and sisters. And no matter what religion they are, we're called to love. And we're going to show you how love uh, we can love, but also distance ourselves as well if it becomes a contamination based on God's word. And it's going to be important because we're going to talk about Bible prophecy this week. To this week ending today is uh, February 18th, 2017. This is the 22nd of Shevet on the year 5,777 on the Hebrew calendar, which is the Jubilee year of the Lord. This is an incredibly important year. That's why we're going to talk about all the things that happened just this week in Bible prophecy. We're going to talk how it deals with Psalm 83, Israel how it's talking about possibly Isaiah 17 being on the horizon of the uh, the things that are happening with Hamas, uh, Hezbollah, the uh, press conference, which we haven't seen a press conference like this uh, maybe in my lifetime between the American president and the prime minister of Israel this last week, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. We're going to talk about what the rabbis believe in building the third temple. We're going to talk about the pope and apostasy and how apostasy would be in the end age and how this is popping up in the middle of the Catholic Church, um, and we need to know truth, and there's some good stuff that's coming out of this, though. Catholics are, uh, are starting to wake up, and they're realizing the, the Pope, what he's saying, is not uh, infallible, far from it, and they're coming against what he is saying in public. We're going to talk about public statements he's made and how far he's taking the Word of God out of context, but the good news here is there's a remnant inside the Catholic Church that literally believe the literal Word of God and they believe in the, the gifts of the Spirit and the Holy Spirit. And that portion of the Catholic Church is just absolutely exploding. And that is a wonderful thing because they're basic, basing it on God's Word, not what the Pope says. We follow history all the way back to the beginning of time of how Pope is a man. And, we, and man has tried to pop, pop, prop the Pope up to be some kind of infallible person, and he's not. We mentioned uh, a book to read, and again, the, 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 the documentations for this book came from scholars within the side the Catholic Church. It's, it's by David Hunt, the woman who rides the beast. That is a great, uh, great, great, great book to show you the truth about the Catholic Church from the beginning of time, based on Catholic scholars. This is not an axe to grind by David Hunt in this, this book. He's, he's taking literal, a, actual Catholic scholars and show you the truth behind the Catholic Church. And God wants us to know the truth. And the truth does not come in man's doctrine. Truth does not come in man's word. Truth comes through the 66 books we call the living word, which is our Savior, Christ the Lord. And we're going to talk about uh, some, some stars uh, movie stars and sports stars, one that have gone against the word of the Lord and some that are praising the Lord. So we want to give equal praise out. And when they praise the Lord, I'm going to call out their name because the glory needs to go to the Lord. And I'm going to tell you that this star in particular did it. Last week, uh, we talked about a star who says he's a Christian, a basketball star, and uh, is not acting in Christian principles uh, at, at all, not walking in the, in the beacon of light. And that's something we'll never call them out by name because that's up for God to judge. But what we can say is he's not walking with the fruit of the Spirit. He's not walking with the light of Christ. And he is not walking the way God has told us through, through his son, Jesus Christ, to be like him. So let's get into it. There's a lot to go over. We'll try to fill you mu as much as we possibly can. We're going to stay in those, those, those tight subjects. Because again, everything is going so fast. It's like Jesus said, the birth pains are speeding up. I could literally go on for hours of what's going on in detail this week, but we're just going to try to keep it at a high level because uh, you, I know you want to have your Saturday afternoon, and the last thing you want to be doing is looking at this ugly mug. But uh, thus says the Lord. The Lord wants us to know these end-time uh, important things. And again, everything centers around Israel, so we got to watch Israel. Uh, Lieberman, who is the uh, foreign minister or the, the, the defense minister of Israel, warned Hamas uh, yesterday that if Hamas continues to uh, build the tunnels uh, and sh shoot rockets like they did a week ago, that Israel is going to go in there mightily. That will f 
I'll go into the Psalm 83 war. Hamas is in the Gaza Strip, West Bank. You got Hezbollah up to Lebanon and Amman, Jordan. Those are the areas of the Psalm 83 which are ready to go. We see the, uh, the, the leader of Hezbollah. Not only does Hezbollah want, to, again, another proxy, both of these are proxies of Iran. Iran gives them the funding of money for terrorism. That's why Iran is, is so important to watch. They're sworn to the destruction of Israel. They want to recreate the Persian Empire. So if you followed uh, Benjamin Netanyahu and uh, Trump's, uh, President Trump's uh, press conference this week, you can see what a threat Iran is not only to Israel and the United States, but also to the Sunnis. And that's why there's a chance for peace because Sunnis know that these people, uh, the Persians, are trying to recapture uh, the Persian Empire for the Shiites. And Sunnis and Shiites uh, hate each other as much as uh, they hate the, the, the infidel Jews and Christians. But our God, the God of Elohim, and through the Son, Jesus Christ, teaches us to love. We love, but we also protect ourselves as well. So... Um, Hezbollah, the head of Hezbollah, again, fundled, funded by uh, Iran or the, trying to create the new Persian Empire, uh, threatened, a nuclear, or a tr threatened an attack on Israel to take out one of their nuclear sites and an ammonia plant. There's an ammonia plant, I believe it's up in, um, uh, it's, on the, it's on the Mediterranean Sea. And if they hit that, it would cause a huge problem, obviously, and kill many people in Israel. So Israel responded back that you will not see what uh, you you'll never see a, a a a response like Israel has ever done in the history of Israel if Hezbollah tries to do that. Remember, Hezbollah is sworn to the destruction of Israel. So is Hamas. That's why you can't have a Palestinian uh, a state, as our, uh, President Trump said. Until in Benjamin Netanyahu, until Hamas, which is a known known terrorist organization all over the world by the United Nations. They're part of the Palestinian government. Hezbollah is trying to be a part of the Lebanese government. So if you are sworn to destroy Israel off the face of the, of, the, of the earth, and you're sworn not to even recognize them, how can you have peace? You'll never have peace, as Benjamin Netanyahu and the President of the United States who supported him and said, that'll never happen. The Palestinians have to ta stop teaching their children that the infidels and the Christians are, 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 are to be killed. That's not the way our God works. The God of the Christians is Elohim. He's a God of love through Jesus Christ. We don't kill in the name of our God. We love in the name of our God. And that's a huge difference. And that's why you're going to have problems having peace when you have a terrorist organization that's sworn in their Quran to kill out the infidels. Um, so that's what's going on in uh, Israel. So this really shaked the Palestinian state. Uh, the threatening uh, against uh, the United States government, saying, hey, if you're going to do that, we're, uh, uh, we're not going to have support for you. They're trying to go into the United Nations World Court. is creating a storm that's coming together. But it's a good storm because we're seeing for the first time that the Sunnis, as I mentioned before, Saudi Arabia and some of the Arab states to come in and support Israel because they know that Iran is trying to destroy and they want to control and they want to be a superpower and they hate the Sunnis. So that's why we're having a Sunni-Shiite battle in Iraq. That's why we have a bloodbath uh, in Sunni-Shiite in, in, in Syria. So this is a, a good time that there could be peace, but also usually when peace comes, there has to be a, a, a fight in most cases before that happens. And it could be the Psalm 83 war at any time. We also can see that if, they t uh, if Hezbollah, ISIS, who shot four rockets from Egypt last week at Israel, take a dirty bomb, a biological bomb, or try to knock out any type of chemical weapon in the nation of Israel. It's called the Samson option. They would destroy the city. And as we said before, Damascus is where all those dirty bombs and biological weapons are. They're in a cache underneath the city, which would explain why Isaiah 17 could come to place that Damascus as a city would be no more. Those things are starting to happen like no other time. We see the rabbis this week praising Trump that they believe that part of the Trump and 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 building of alliance with uh, Benjamin Netanyahu could build the third temple. People ask, "Will the build?" People ask me all the time, "Will they build? What's this third temple?" They'll never build a third temple. 
Yes, they will, because we know a, a third temple is built. We know a fourth temple is built. We know a fourth temple, the millennial temple, is in the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel 40 through 48. Ezekiel goes into great detail by God to show you what the, the dimensions of the millennial temple will be. But we know based on Daniel, and we know based on Jesus Christ, the abomination of desolation happens where? In the temple. So there has to be a third temple built before the coming of the Lord and before the Antichrist comes up and does the abomination of desolate. So those are the things that the rabbis uh, are believing in Israel. Many supernatural things are uh, happening. Uh, we mentioned before, all the elements to the temple are ready to go. Everything is, that is needed is ready to go, first time in history. Um, the Pope, we're talking about the days of apostasy. Jo John talked about this in 1 John and uh, 2 John, 3 John. Uh, Jesus talked about, what, be aware of that. Paul talks about it. Beware of that and, and Timothy of, of falling away, the apostasy, the itching ears, knowing the truth. We talked about every denomination denying some aspect of God's word. Uh, last week, the Methodists had a gay, marriage, or a gay priest, lesbian priest, to, uh, to, in, in, in as a priest or a, as a minister inside the Methodist face. And many in the Methodist church said, no, 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 no more. And, they're, and, the, and their tithing has gone down. And now they're pleading with the Methodists to give us money. Well, God is not going to support somebody or anything that goes against his holy word. We talked about yesterday as a word of the day, denying the Holy Spirit. There's a denomination that denies the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, we need to welcome in. The Holy Spirit is the only thing on the earth right now keeping things afloat into the fullness of the Gentiles. And the rapture of the church, the harpazo, what goes up with the church? The Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit's gone, all chaos, because there's nothing going to be interceding anymore. We look at the Pope. The Pope made three crazy comments that we mentioned earlier this week. And you could say, uh, you know, if you're in a press conference and you, you have a slip of the tongue, that's one thing. But when you have a, 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 you're addressing somebody, that means your notes have been looked over, they've been looked over, they've been looked over, they've been looked over. You know exactly what you're going to say. So this week... The Pope um, has created a stir that is splitting the Catholic Church, some in good ways, some in bad ways. One way it is that it's growing a, a, a remnant inside the Catholic Church is saying, no more, I'm Catholic, but I do not support what our Pope is saying. He obviously does not know the Bible, and what he's saying is, has no logic whatsoever. And we're going to explain it and then explain what the Bible literally says, how the Pope has taken it out of context. Again, when you have a denomination like Catholic denomination that believes in replacement theology, again, that's man-made doctrine saying the church has replaced Israel, therefore you don't understand the Old Testament. Therefore you don't understand the importance of Israel. The Pope is sided with a Palestinian saying the Palestinians should have the land and Israel has no right to the land. He's not reading his Bible. He's not even reading the New Testament. That's absolutely blasphemy. He said uh, yesterday, and I quote, um, and he went into great detail. Muslim, terrorist, Muslim terrorism does not exist. And even a common sense atheist looks at that and says, what is the Pope smoking in the Vatican? Obviously, there is extremism in the Islamic faith. Not every Islam, uh, uh, Muslim is of this extremist, but there is obviously an extremist of that, that, that religion that is going absolutely out of control. The Pope is saying that not to build walls, we're not to block people from coming out, but yet the Vatican is more, has more walls than any other. If that's so true, then the Vatican needs to take its walls down as well. Don't be a hypocrite and say, don't build a wall to have illegals come into one country, but yet I'm going to have a wall in the Vatican to protect me. So that, that, you're talking out both sides of their mouth, and Catholic is starting to get it. Praise God. He's, he said inside of mosques, hoping that nobody would understand this. He said um, it is okay that, uh, and, and at one point said that uh, all Muslims will go to heaven. And some have tried to retract that, back that statement back, saying he took that out of context. He did say it. Where we need to have him come back and clarify it. It was, it was a press release that said, well, he didn't really mean that. Well, you got to be careful what you say, because that's obviously a big thing. Jesus tells us there's one way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way. And he said inside a mosque that Allah and Jehovah are the same God. Now, he 
either is the worst theologian on the face of the earth, or he's flat out lying. Either one is horrible, because he is speaking this out to 1.3 billion Catholics and to the world, telling them that Allah and Jehovah, or Elohim, are the same God. That is not true. We mentioned before that even the Supreme Court of Indonesia, under this doctrine, this false doctrine, this blasphemy, it's a blasphemy to the, the Muslims as well. So uh, Indonesia is the largest Muslim country in the face of the earth. It went to the Supreme Court of Indonesia, and they said, no way, Allah is not Jehovah. They're not the same God. Because in the Muslim belief is Allah has no son. And in the belief of Christianity, that, God, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and he's God. You can't have it both ways. It's either one or the other. It can't be both. So that's where we have to stand. Jesus Christ is the center of the entire universe. Who he is is where your destination will fall. If you believe that he's a prophet of Muhammad, same as Muhammad, or less than Muhammad, but Allah never had a son, you've made a decision that he's just a prophet and just a man. But if you believe that he is the, he is the son of God, God in the second head, and he died, and he's the only way to, to eternal life, that is your ticket to freedom. That is your ticket to eternal life. It's one or the other. That's why God gives us the will to change. And we pray as Christians to all our Muslim brothers and sisters, Hindus, Buddhists, anyone of any other religion, we pray for them. We pray that they will find the true Christ, the Son of God, and God in the second head. We're not going to force it on them. We're not going to try to push our, our, our love relationship of Jesus Christ on them. We're going to love them as brothers and sisters once they come into the faith, as brothers and sisters, and we're going to love them, as Jesus said, as, as, our, as, our, as our neighbor. We're going to pray for them. We're going to keep, continue to pray for them and, 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 and love them and show them the beacon of light, which is Jesus Christ. We're not going to hate them. We're not going to say, oh, you're Islam, I'm not a part of you. No, that's not what Jesus taught. Jesus taught love, love, love. It's all about love, but we still have to choose. Either Jesus is the Son of God and God in the second head and part of the Trinity, or he's a prophet. There's no other. You've got to choose, and that's what your, your, your eternity is based on that decision. And we pray for all our Muslim brothers and sisters, which are coming to his glory in record numbers, record numbers, praise the Lord, because God is revealing himself through Jesus Christ more so today than any other time. That's why the Lord put on my heart last year to really study the Quran. I spent hours and hours and hours and hours studying the Quran and highlighting where they say the Torah is a holy book and the prophets of the Old Testament are holy and the Gospels are holy and showing the differences between what the Bible says and what the Quran says and showing that there is huge holes in the Quran. And that has been a, a, a blessing from the Lord because it's giving Muslims uh, hope to go and find truth. I'm not forcing truth on anybody. We don't force truth. Jesus Christ is truth. If you seek him and you diligently ask him, you will find him. And if you're a Muslim, listen to this broadcast. I'm not going to force you on Jesus Christ, but I ask you tonight, pray to him. Pray to the Lord. Pray to Jesus Christ and say, Jesus, if you are not a prophet, but you are the son of God and you are God in the second head, reveal yourself to me either through a dream, through a vision, through a word, through a voice, or through your Holy Spirit. And he's revealing himself in record ways. We put it on his glory uh, Facebook and his glory website, uh, hisglory.tv all the time, of all the Muslims that are coming to Christianity because God is showing himself exactly the way it's said in the prophet Joel in the end days that the young, and it's millennials, 86% of His Glory Ministry, or His Glory Nation, is millennials all around the world, and 85% of the people that are coming to His Glory Ministry are all in Muslim nations. Praise God! He's going into the heart of the Muslim world and showing His love, and people are saying, hey, I know who this Jesus is. It's not who my grandparents said. It's not the traditions, the traditions of Islam. And the same traditions of the Catholic Church aren't right either. we got to know the Word of God. So that's where uh, um, the Pope, saying terrorism doesn't exist, said in a mosque that Allah and Jehovah are not the same God, or are, are the same God. Blasphemy from both sides. That is absolutely not true. And he also said, um, 
He made a, a tweet today which stirred more controversy, and unfortunately most uh, Catholics just said, oh yeah, that sounds great, kumbaya. He says that the Lord said that to welcome the aliens and the foreigners in, meaning a, sl a slap at the United States not letting in, um, uh, br bringing in uh, immigrants. And that's not what God said. He took it completely out of context of what the Lord told us. Both the, the God the Father and the, the first covenant of the Old Testament, he is very clear in the Torah. This is out of the Torah that God the Father, Elohim, in Hebrew means three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God says this in the Torah repeatedly. I welcome the foreigners and aliens into the nation of Israel if they obey my, my precepts and commandments that I've written in this book, meaning the Torah and his Bible. They need to be obedient to that. And if they love me, the one God, Elohim. That's, that's when you bring foreigners and aliens in. So if, if, they're not of the, if, so if they're not of that and they believe in a different religion, what are we to do? Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself. But the, the New Testament also tells us through Paul, you don't let them inside so that they can corrupt the church and let the, let the sin spread. You, you, if they're against, you pray for them, you keep praying for them, but you keep at a distance. But if they're learning and want more, then you bring them in and you show them. But when they start to try to take over and create heresy inside the church of their belief, it says the leaven will spread throughout the loaf. And Paul tells us not to let that happen. So that's a big difference. It's just saying letting all foreigners and aliens in. God never said that in either case, either through Jesus Christ or through God the Father. There were, uh, there were terms based on that. So you can't take the Bible out of context to try to make a political point. You've got to read the totality of God's word. And that's why we have blasphemy. That's why we have apostasy in these end days. Because we're listening to men say things and take the Bible out of context. And take other religions out of context. Every single Muslim should be up in an uproar that the Pope says Allah and Jehovah are the same God. They're not the same God. Because we know that Jesus Christ is the Son of God in the Christian faith. So how can Allah, who never had a son, be the same God? You're either the most ignorant theologian on the face of the earth, or you're intentionally trying to deceive. And I won't say what is the latter. It's the choice of our hearts. That's why God tells us we need to get in the word of the Lord so we're not fooled. Only the knowledge and the discernment that come from the Holy Spirit God the Father and Jesus Christ is what's true. Man is going to try to change it. Tradition is going to try to change it. Most of the time, we don't even know what this tradition is based on. It's Nine out of ten of the Roman Catholic traditions are based off pagan rituals. It's insane. That's why we got to go back to the original word and stay in the word of God. It's infallible. We know that by the Dead Sea Scrolls. Perry Stone did a teaching this week, if you follow Perry Stone. It's very good. It's how detailed the, the, the rabbis have been since the beginning of time and how they ch ch uh, would, would copy the scrolls of the Old Testament. There used to be, they take the scroll and they would, because the ink would only last for a year or so, so they were always constantly each month writing the scrolls to keep them up to date. And they were, had to be so accurate that they would have, they would have a, 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 um, a tool that they would make sure it was perfectly in line when one person wrote the scroll, they would always have two witnesses to make sure it is accurate to God's word. If they made a mistake, they had to go back and erase it. If they made a mistake by, the, by Elohim, God in three, or Jehovah, or God in three, both in Hebrew, and they just spelled the name God wrong or put it out of sequence or the spacing wasn't quite, quite right, they were to take that scroll because they believe it's a living, breathing uh, uh, document of the Lord, and they would bury it and have to start over. So if people to say, well, you know, they didn't, the, the, the Holy Scripture is not the original. The original scrolls are original. And the, is, the Jewish people went to great lengths and still do to make sure the accuracy of the Lord is there, even to the spacing. Remember what Jesus says in Matthew 5, 17 and 18. We, we, we miss this. People say, well, the, the Bible's an allegory. That's not what Jesus said. People say it's, the Bible's an allegory. Then why, did, why does every single author of the New Testament quote the Old Testament word for word? We did a study on Friday about the Holy Spirit. Peter quoted Joel word for word. 
Jesus quoted Daniel word for word, Isaiah word for word, Deuteronomy word for word. Paul quoted the Old Testament over and over again, word for word. Everyone quoted the Old Testament word for word, literal. But what did Jesus say in Matthew 5, 17, 18? He said, I didn't come to replace the law and the prophets. I came to fulfill it to every yacht and tittle. Yacht and tittle in the Hebrew means the smallest blemish, a little comma or a little part on a particular letter. The smallest blemish in the Hebrew. Literally meaning he would come and explain the spaces between the scrolls. And we know when Jesus stood up and wrote from, read from the scroll of Isaiah, he stopped in, on a comma. Literally stopped at a comma in that, in, in that, in that uh, scroll reading from the, the temple. Go back and read that in um, Isaiah 60. He stops at a comma. That's how precise he says it is. Uh, so we mentioned parts of the, the Catholic Church are uh, coming to the Lord, knowing the Holy Spirit, and are denouncing it and saying, hey, I'm Catholic, but I don't, I'm not buying all this stuff. This is not what the Bible says. Praise God that they are going to the truth of the Word of God. So God bless them. God bless all the Catholics. God bless every denomination that is seeking truth instead of man's denomination. We are called to be the church. We don't need to be labeled with something. It's okay to be a Baptist. It's okay to be a Methodist unless it's going against the Word of God. Then why do you need to call yourself that? You need to go to the one God through his son, Jesus Christ, and get the truth from him. There's another portion of the Catholic Church, and here's another heresy. Here's another blasphemy. You got a liberal side, and you got a, you got a, 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 a literal, literal, infallible word side inside the Catholic Church. There's division within the church. You talk to inner people in the church, there's, there's never been division like this in, in probably the history of the church. There is the, 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 a portion of the church that wants to make canon wants to make a theological doctrine from the Catholic Church that Mary is equal in divinity to Jesus Christ. Hang on to your hats. Here we go. That is absolutely blasphemy. And we call on the, 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 the faith of the Catholics that know the word of God to stand up and say no. And what I'm hearing over and over, more Catholics are coming up and saying, no, 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 no. That is not right. That's not based on God's word. And Catholics are starting to grow. And it, the, the, the beautiful thing on how God is working, he's opened the eyes of people because of fake news and fake everything. And um, these Catholics that believe in the literal word of God are growing three, four times faster than the other ones that are the old traditionists that are starting to die, die, die out. And they're trying to hang on to the traditions where the, the, the growing part of the Catholic Church are the ones that believe in the literal and fallible Word of God, including the Holy Spirit, including believing that demons are uh, up to this day. Um, we talked about fake news. Whenever you see fake news in these fake times, God has given us a chance to, to, to seek, seek truth. Remember, he said a wolf in sheep's clothing at the end. Apostasy would happen in the church. It's happening. We know it's the end times because we have to seek truth. And when you look at American media... I can go through Yahoo, I could go through Google, I could go through all the search engines, and I can see all the news stories. And I go to the news story and see what the news story says, and I'll go to whatever particular uh, newspaper that wrote that, or media source that came from, and I can tell you exactly, before even reading the article, how, what side it is going to be, whether it's fake news, or it's going to be uh, real news, or extreme news. And 99% of the time it's fake news. And you got to go by, by in, in the old the me, old message in um, the business world is follow the money. Why does the Washington Post and the New York Times uh, um, owned by billionaires? The newspaper industry is not making money, or is stagnant at best. So why does Jeff Bezos, the, the head of Amazon, want to buy the Washington Post, who owns the Washington Post? Because he wants to be able to handle the news. He wants to create the news that's going to be good for Amazon. And Amazon created a, a, did a contract with the CIA to do their cloud. And we're now seeing the Ivanka Trump sales of her garments on um, Amazon are the number one on Amazon. So they're using their platforms to, do, to create their, their financial goals. That's why they buy newspapers. That's why they buy media, CNN. They're bought by bigger companies. Uh, NBC was bought by one of my mentors in the business world, Jack Welch. 
So big businesses are buying up these, these media companies. Why? To influence politics, to influence ways that their company can get better favor with the U.S. government or make more money. you got to follow the money. The New York Times. Why is the New York Times doing what the New York Times is? Who owns it? One of the most richest men in the world, one of the top 10 richest men in the world. Slim, he's a Mexican billionaire. And he got his money from uh, the, the wireless industry. He's the, the number one owner of the wireless in the Latin, Latin America. He doesn't buy it because he's trying to make money off the New York Times. No, he's done it for political and powerful reasons. Follow the money. You'll see why it's fake news. Always follow the money. We see all these, these political... Uh, these, 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 these protests, and some protests, you know, it's, it's part of our con as Constitution to protest peacefully, not burning up things, destroying things, um, and doing it for the wrong reasons and, and, and breaking laws. But it's interesting when you, tra you track some of these, these, peace, or these, uh, these, these protests, they're coming in vans, they're highly uh, prepared, and now you can start tracking them back to certain person, George Soros, paying for these organizations to create this, this instability. Why? Because he wants to have his influence all over the world. George Soros is behind 30 different organizations that, that, that fund in the United States of America. The nation of China and Russia have declared George Soros a economic terrorist. So if he ever landed in China or Russia, he would be jailed and probably would not get out of there alive. They consider him worse than Osama bin Laden. So you got to remember with this fake news and all this stuff that's coming out, look for truth and follow the money and what the purpose is because the money will lead to the root reason why they're doing it. It's about power. It's about greed. It's about money. Exactly the way in 2 Timothy they said in the end days, there will be lovers of money, power, greed. There will be apostasy in the church. Fake news is also God's way of saying, let's check, check fake doctrine as well. We should have hashtag fake church. Fake church. Learn what the real church is through the 66 books of God's word, which is Jesus Christ. The last part of this, we're going to talk about, um, we mentioned last week where somebody is not walking in the way of the Lord, uh, a, a basketball star, that my, my son uh, got his shoes and got his jersey and now my, I didn't even ask my son to do this. And he says, Dad, I, I don't even want his, his jersey or his shoes, and I'll never do it again because the only reason I followed him is because he, he said he, he loved Jesus Christ and everything he does he's doing in the glory of Christ, but yet doesn't walk the walk of Christ, doesn't talk the talk of Christ. But here's a star that I saw this week, and I'm going to give her kudos. And maybe she's done some bad things in, in the past. We all have done bad things in the past. I'm not here to judge, but I am to give kudos to something that she did well, giving praise where praise is, is, is given. And that's Britney Spears. And if anybody ever knew me, or knows me and my family or my friends and say, he's talking about Britney Spears? Oh my gosh, Dad, you're too old to talk about Britney Spears. Um, Britney Spears had a, a horrible tragedy in her family uh, a, a couple weeks ago. Her, her, her sister's daughter uh, got in, a, in, a, in an accident and went underwater, and they couldn't get her in time. Uh, and within, it took a few minutes before the EMTs could, could rescue this, this poor little girl. And uh, they, they didn't know if she was going to survive, and they didn't know if she was going to have brain damage. And the family asked for prayer. And they were very private about that. And, I, and I'm told Britney Spears prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and sought the face of the Lord and said, if you're, you're, if you're real, Lord, supernaturally uh, help, help, help my, um, my niece. And she was healed. And everyone in the family said it was an answer to prayer. And Britney Spears said it was an answer to prayer. She just not saying, didn't say that just as a figure of speech. She literally meant that. And we pray that Britney Spears the rest of her life, that she knows the most high God is the most important thing on the face of the earth. And it's our love for him and our love through his son, Jesus Christ, that gives us eternal life. And he is a great God. He is real. And he wants to have that intimacy with you today. Seek his face and ask him to come into your life. This is the Bible prophecy for the week. May the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob bless you to next time. God bless you.